the students, it's, I guess, advice for them early on in their career. Like, was there something that happened to you early that just gave you this inspiration to really do what you do? It was a slightly little bit simpler when we started, you know? Like, it was a couple of hardware pieces of equipment, you plugged them together and, and you kind of went for it. And uh, yeah. in a way, it's simpler on another side right now because everybody has access to, like, Ableton, Native Instruments stuff. It's, it's, it's just right in front of you. But there's nearly so many choices that it, it's become complex again. Right. And uh, I think that's the, the balance that the kids have to find. It's like finding a combination that still retains some type of sim simplicity, but also has a uniqueness, uh, you know, and, and kind of, what's the word, like, um, uh, exaggerates their human uniqueness, you know? You can plug in the same things, you know, yourself and, and me, and hopefully we're going to find a, a, our own way through that technology, you know, and uh, I think that maybe that's it, just to, not to be uh, afraid of, of not trying to look over everybody else's shoulder and have all those plugins, you know, find the right couple of things for you and then spend time with that. And that's, that's the hardest thing to do. Like, that's the hardest thing, you know, it is for me now. But in the beginning, it wasn't so hard because there wasn't so many options. You know, I, I, I could only afford a couple of synths and so I sat down in the basement for six months and I played with those until I thought I knew everything in it and then I learned more but now it's like two weeks later you're like fuck well there's an update of this plug and now it's got three more filters this and that and it's like it's a never-ending process of updating and 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 learning and, and and exploring which is great but if you're always learning and exploring maybe sometimes you you forget to actually create grab something do it and put it on the you know on the shelf or release it and uh, those are I don't know if that's the, an answer to the question, but those are, I think, the, the problems that are facing everyone right now. It's right. just too much information. And uh, you could just sit on, uh, online searching and downloading, you know, samples and, 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 and test versions of plugins for forever. And here you can kind of come speak to some artists, other people, and perhaps kind of have a couple of doors opened. And, you know, find, a, get a little bit of information and, and feel, you know, find your direction. You know, or maybe you're just lost. Or just, to, I think, to find a point of entry. Because I, I think if you, you don't have to know how to do everything from start to finish, and you don't have to learn every single tool that's out there. But if you learn how to find your way into it, then, you know, like, if you just learn your basic way around a synthesizer, it doesn't matter, you know, how many different versions of those kinds of synthesizers you're going to find. You're going to at least feel confident how to, like, grab which knob and what to do with it and how to make it your own. When we're teaching students now how to, how to produce music and early on, some of them don't have any prior experience. They've never played an instrument. They just have heard music that, that just has motivated and moved them to come here and, and do something more than just listen to it, right? So now we're starting them out with, there, there are controllers like the APC and, and machine. And, and so it's a lot more tactile now. You know, we kind of move the mouse aside and the keyboard, which is exciting, it's great. And so we're teaching them more now from a performance standpoint from the beginning, more like improv. So they're, they're kind of playing around with the sounds and, 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 and you know, just coming up with ideas, recording that, and then using those pieces later on. And we get into some music theory, of course, and stuff, but it's really for, about them experimenting. This idea of instrument that everyone keeps saying, that's, that's a key, the key thing. That's what I guess I would say would be important for kids to leave here with, is an idea that, you know, they need to learn an instrument, whether it's a computer or a plug-in, but it's not the computer and everything. You know, a great guitar player spends years learning that guitar a great drummer and I think some kids want to like learn s so much of it and they're never going to be an expert of, of anything and uh, when you're an expert or maybe not even an expert when you know something that you stop thinking about what you're doing and you just let actions you know you know involuntary things happen with whatever you're touching or playing with that's when you, you, you create something that you know you can never hopefully even go back to the, the, the magic is in the accident or capturing that you know, human interaction with like a knob or a fader or, or, or a keyboard. And uh, the technology there now is there so that you can, you can do that either way, in the studio or you know, on a, on a, you know, in, a, in a live performance. So, so for me, it's, you know, I, I don't even know if I would look at them any different at all anymore. You know, the, the magic of the studio for me when I was making my early tracks 10 or 15 years ago was that I had a setup that was quite complicated, but it was made so that I could just interact really fast. 
and the best moments were live moments. And uh, that's really, I guess, you know, what I'm trying to capture when I do a show now. Like, I don't do as much as recording as I used to, but I pretty much interact slightly different equipment, but in the, in the same way in front of people now. It's like, okay, it's, it's a stream of thought. You're going and you're, you're, you're doing this and you're playing with your instruments, which is a key kind of phrase. And uh, you're trying to let, trying to you know, have things so relaxed in a way that something magical happens. Yeah, Kevin and I are here just to hopefully answer any questions that you guys have. I know you were doing some track building uh, earlier today, and uh, we're not going to go stepping through the process of how we create tracks, but uh, maybe more about what happens once you have those tracks done, um, what we do after that, uh, how we perform. Uh, but really, anything that you want to ask us is really, is really open. Um, and, um, and maybe explain some of the things we've been doing, um, you know, and, and how things have changed with technology the last, uh, you know, five or ten years. What's interesting to Kevin and I is also to see, you know, I don't know so many places like Dub, Dubspot in the, in the world. So to see something like this being so successful and so many people interested to learn how to make electronic music or to DJ, um, I'm interested to see, you know, what people want to get out of this type of course and where they want to go. Uh, maybe Kevin and I can, you know, help with um, not the destination, but at least your journey. Um, but it's, uh, you know, when we were starting, there was nothing really like this. We had to, uh, um, you know, learn everything ourselves uh, and um, just kind of go with it. And, um, I, you know, I think that's, you know, what was exciting for, for Kevin and I was when, you know, there was no book, there was no school, and uh, it was always um, uh, exciting just to experiment with uh, keyboards and electronics and, and see what we could do. Um, and, um, you know, I'd like to, I'd, nearly, I'd love to know, you know, really what, why you guys ended up here. I, we can't ask everybody that, but, uh, you know, so again, I guess we're going to start off with one question and, and, and go from there.